Hi everyone, this is Maverick Paul, the Chemistry Guru. Now in this video, we want to discuss determining the feasibility of a redox reaction using standard electropotentials in the data booklet. Now in the topic of electrochemistry, where we discuss redox reaction, we actually have a specific type of question, which is to determine the feasibility of redox reactions. And what we will have to do is we will have to refer to the data booklet and pick up the relevant standard electropotentials and we want to calculate the standard E cell, which will in turn determine the feasibility of that redox reaction. So let us have an example involving acidified MnO4- plus H2O2. So if I'm adding acidified manganese with hydrogen peroxide, then what we want to do is we want to determine the feasibility of this redox reaction. Now actually before we determine the feasibility of this reaction, we have to figure out what is the redox reaction in the first place. So what we will have to do is we have to first deduce what is the most likely redox reaction that will occur. Then from there, we subsequently determine the feasibility of that. So the first thing we will have to do is if I'm adding manganate to H2O2, now manganate, it is a strong oxidizing agent. So we know that manganate will undergo reduction. So I know that MnO4- minus in this case will undergo reduction. So later we will refer to the data booklet and choose the relevant half equation. But before we do that, since I know that manganate undergoes reduction and all the half equations in the data booklet are all written in reduction form. So therefore, when I try to look out for this MnO4 minus, I only need to look out for this guy on the left hand side of the half equation. So this guy will be on the left hand side of the half equation inside the data booklet. So later when we refer to the data booklet, it will save us quite a bit of time if I know specifically which part of the half equation that species would be. Because as mentioned, all the half equations in the data booklet are all in reduction form. So if this species undergoes reduction, then we look out for it on the left-hand side of the half equation. Now on the other hand, if I know that manganate undergoes reduction, so therefore H2O2 has to undergo oxidation. H2O2 has to undergo oxidation. Now hydrogen peroxide, this is interesting because hydrogen peroxide can be both an oxidizing agent as well as a reducing agent. So that is the reason why for this exercise, we have to focus on manganate first. We decide manganate undergoes reduction first. Then I determine that H2O2 undergoes oxidation because this guy can be either oxidized or reduced. So we will have to fix the other reagent. So I know that manganate undergoes reduction. H2O2 has to undergo oxidation. So there's no need for us to consider the possibility that H2O2 can undergo reduction because there's no such thing as a reduction of manganate followed by a reduction of hydrogen peroxide. There's no such thing as a reduction reduction reaction. If it is a redox reaction, one species must undergo oxidation and one species must undergo reduction. So if I know that manganate is reduced, then H2O2 must be oxidized. So if I want to look out for hydrogen peroxide in the data booklet, H2O2 should be on the right hand side of the half equation. So it should be found on the right hand side of the half equation. Later when I refer to the data booklet, then it is easier for me to find this hydrogen peroxide. So the next thing we want to do is we want to refer to the data booklet and choose these two relevant half equations involving manganate as well as H2O2. All right, let's consider manganate first. As mentioned, we know that manganate, since it undergoes reduction, it has to be found on the left-hand side of the half equation. So these are the half equations involving manganate, where manganate it is on the left-hand side. Now actually, because the oxidation state for manganese in manganate, it is a plus seven oxidation state. It is the highest possible oxidation state for Mn. So we don't really have any reaction which can oxidize manganate. So manganate will always be found on the left-hand side of the half equation, which means that if I interpret the equation from left to right, you will have to gain electron and undergoes reduction. That is the reason why when we look out for reduction, we choose the species on the left-hand side so that it will be reduced from left to right. So I have three half equations involving these three different products, MnO4, 2 minus, where the oxidation state for manganese, in this case, this is a plus six oxidation state, MnO2, where the oxidation state for manganese, this is a plus four. Obviously, Mn2 plus this oxidation state will be a plus two. Now, if we're talking about manganate in acidic medium, then which is the half equation that we should be using? Now, if manganate undergoes reduction, 
in acidic medium, then the half equation that we should be using is this one, manganate reduced to Mn2+. plus. So this will be the half equation that we will be using, and this will be the half equation that we should be copying down. This E value will be a plus 1.52 volt. Now just to comment on the other two half equations, when do we use MnO4 minus reduced to MnO2? This half equation is used in neutral medium or alkaline medium. So if MnO4 minus it is reduced, in neutral or alkaline medium, then we would use MnO2 as the product. If it is in acidic medium, then manganate will be reduced to Mn2+. Now this MnO4 2 minus, actually we don't use it very often. So most of the time, we will not be using this half equation where MnO4 minus, it is reduced to MnO4 2 minus. All right, next, how about hydrogen peroxide? As mentioned, hydrogen peroxide, it is oxidized. So therefore, it has to be found on the right-hand side of the half equation. If you look through the data booklet, actually the first half equation involving H2O2, if you consider both sides of the equation, is actually this guy, where H2O2, it is on the left-hand side, and it is reduced to water. Now, of course, we will have to ignore this half equation because as mentioned, we already determined that in this redox reaction, manganese is the one that undergoes reduction. So therefore, it is not possible for hydrogen peroxide to be also reduced. So therefore, we will ignore this guy. We will only look out for H2O2 on the right-hand side of the half equation. So if you look through this list, actually there's only one half equation involving H2O2 on the right-hand side, which is this chap here. So I know that this will be the half equation that we are interested in. H2O2 on the right-hand side, oxidized to O2 on the left-hand side. So this E value, which is a plus 0.68 volt, this is the E value that we will be using. The half equation that we should be choosing involving the oxidation of hydrogen peroxide should be this guy here, H2O2 on the right-hand side, and O2 it is on the left-hand side. So because there are certain species which will appear on both sides of the equation, sometimes it becomes confusing if I try to find all the half equations which contain all the species, then we try to see which is the one that is relevant. So some of us, if we choose to look out for all the possible hydrogen peroxides inside the data booklet, then we will have two half equations. One is involving H2O2 on the left-hand side. One is involving H2O2 on the right-hand side. Then some of us will have this confusion because now we say that if I have these two half equations, I don't know which is the half equation for us to use. So recommended what we will do is, if you know exactly what will happen to hydrogen peroxide, in this case, I know that H2O2 it is oxidized. So I only focus on H2O2 on the right-hand side of the half equation. Even if it appears on the left-hand side, of the half equation, it is not relevant because it will represent the reduction of H2O2, which is not what we want inside this example. All right, so the next thing we will do is we want to determine the redox reaction. These are the two half equations that we have copied down, manganate plus 8H plus plus 5 electron to give me Mn2 plus plus 4 water. E value, it is a plus 1.52 volt. Now remember, what we have is we have manganate, MnO4 minus, and the only reaction that is possible is reduction in the forward direction because MnO4 it is on the left hand side so therefore it must undergo reduction in the forward direction and we have also determined the half equation involving hydrogen peroxide H2O2 on the right hand side oxidized to O2 on the left hand side E value it is a plus 0.68 volt now remember because H2O2 it is on the right hand side so only oxidation is possible so this reaction we will have to consider in the reverse direction which is oxidation so if I have one species on the left-hand side, which means that it undergoes reduction in the forward direction, and I have one species on the right-hand side, which will represent oxidation in the reverse direction, so therefore this redox reaction is fixed. This is the redox reaction between manganate, the reduction of manganate, and hydrogen peroxide, the oxidation of hydrogen peroxide. Then, the next thing we will want to do is, we want to determine the feasibility of this redox reaction which we will use this formula, standard E cell equals to standard E reduction minus standard E oxidation. Now the E reduction will be the half equation involving reduction, obviously. This is a plus 1.52 volt. So I can put this in, this is a plus 1.52 volt. Minus E oxidation will be a plus 0.68 volt. So this will be a plus 0.68 volt. Now this will give me a positive value which is a plus 0.84 volt. So since the standard E cell it is a positive value, it means that this redox reaction is feasible. All right, so we have this here, E cell positive, it means that this redox reaction is feasible, and we can proceed to write out the 
balance redox equation. Okay, finally, balancing the equation, it is actually very easy. What we will need to do is we just need to copy the two half equations from the data booklet. Now, the two half equations are already here. If it is reduction, then we just virtually copy this half equation involving magnate to MN2 plus from left to right. So this is MNO4 minus plus AH plus plus 5 electron to give me MN2 plus plus 4 water. I just copy this literally from left to right, and this will be the reduction half equation. Now for oxidation half equation, what we do is I will copy this half equation from right to left. So H2O2 to O2 plus 2H plus plus 2 electron, which will be exactly this one here. So once I've copied these two half equations, then what we will need to do is just to add them up. Now adding the two half equations is actually fairly easy because I need to make sure that the electrons will cancel. So I determine the lowest common multiple. Then in this case, five electrons and two electrons. Lowest common multiple will be 10 electrons. So the first half equation, which is the reduction half equation, I will need to double. The second half equation, which is the oxidation half equation, I will need to times five. So after that, what I will do is I can add the two half equations up. Then later we see whether there are any terms to cancel. So this guy will be 2 MnO4 minus. So let me write this here. This is 2 MnO4 minus. Then after that, this will be 8H plus times 2, which is 16H pluses. 16H plus. The 10 electrons will cancel later. So I will leave that out. Then I have 5H2O2 here. So this is a plus 5 hydrogen peroxide followed by the products. Now the products will be Mn2 plus times 2. So this will be 2 Mn2 plus. Water, I have 4 water times 2. So this will be 8 water. So 8 H2O. The products in the oxidation half equation, this is 5 times oxygen. So I will have 5 O2. And I will have 2H plus times 5, so this will give me 10H pluses, so 10H pluses. Again, the electrons will cancel, so therefore we can leave that out. So what we'll have to do next is we have to simplify the half equation. Usually we will look out for things like water and H pluses, which is very common that can appear on both sides of the equation. So I have 16H pluses on the left hand side, I have 10H pluses on the right hand side. So what I can do is I can cancel away this 10 H pluses, then this will become 6 H pluses. Then maybe I look out for water. Now I have 8 water on the right hand side. I don't have any water on the left hand side. So therefore this equation is simplified. So this will be the overall redox reaction involving MnO4- and hydrogen peroxide. So let me tidy this up and write this up again. Alright, so this will be the overall balance equation involving this redox reaction, 2 MnO4 minus plus 6 H pluses plus 5 hydrogen peroxide to give me 2 Mn2 plus plus 8 water plus 5 O2. Alright, so that was the discussion involving determining the feasibility of a redox reaction using standard electrode potentials inside the data booklet. So if you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.